Hello, and welcome to our next In Conversation With installment. Today, we have John Price of Allergy Guard and Walter Ross of Hemp Hermit. Welcome. Good to be here. So, um, John, can you tell us a little bit about Allergy Guard uh, Pollen Protector? Good Absolutely. Protector. Um, our company has been in business over 100 years, and we are in the business of microparticle um, filtration and engineered uh, products um, in those industry segments. Allergy Guard is a product that was originally innovated for uh, human beings. We have a proprietary technology, it's called nano screen filtration technology, which is essentially a filter that is specifically engineered to, to uh, block uh, microparticles. And it was engineered for pollen specifically. And so we, it's always a balance of uh, blocking the pollen, but maximizing airflow. Mm -hmm. And this was originally innovated for human beings to uh, protect people who suffered from acute pollen allergies. And what ended up happening was we were, this is a few years ago, we were discovered by uh, the agriculture industry, uh, specifically uh, hemp and cannabis uh, growers who, um, needed to find ways to block their pollen. And so they found Allergy Guard and we uh, started finding that it was deployed all across the USA at different operations. And so uh, we continued to build out that segment uh, aggressively. So Allergy Guard is essentially uh, a, a greenhouse screen um, packed on rolls like, uh, like any other screen, the difference being that Allergy Guard is a very high tech uh, greenhouse screen that's engineered to block that pollen. And so um, what we do is uh, we fabricate all shapes and sizes of greenhouse sidewall panels. So what the farmers will do is deploy the product to replace their, their insect screen uh, along their evaporator pad sidewall, or we have clients that will cover up um, any intake, any air intake space. Mm -hmm. They put it outside of their, their intake fans. They, they, they cover everything, overhead slat vents, windows, doors. And the objective is to keep the pollen out of the grow space to prevent cross-contamination and defend purity and uh, just have positive control over their growth. And so, yeah, it's uh, particularly attractive to cannabis and hemp, but we also, you know, we support uh, big ag as well for R&D with a lot of proprietary uh, program work, all focused around how do you block pollen? Right. And that's a very it's a challenging thing to do in an agricultural environment. And that's what Allergy Guard does. Yeah, and I do see, you know, a trend in the future in terms of even like uh, vertical farming you know, the indoor grows is just, you know, up and coming. Um, so that's great that there is a product for um, mitigation of, of pollen and even um, pest management. Exactly. And, you know, of course, um, pollen is a lot smaller in terms of particle size compared to the micro insect. So when it comes to the micro insects, you know, the white flies and just everything, of course, we're gonna block those guys too. So that's, they're much bigger. In fact, micro insects in our world are gigantic. Yeah. And so we're hyper-focused on the micro particulate. So that's the mission of the product. That's wonderful. Um, and Walter, can you tell us a little bit about how you came um, upon Allergy Guard? Pollen protector. Uh, I believe I, I, I was researching uh, screens of that nature uh, uh, on the internet and came across uh, Allergy Guard, and it had extensive uh, information on, you know, the product, the material, the procedure, and it was exactly what I was looking for as I uh, attempted to. Uh, begin growing a uh, premium uh, hemp flower for CBD, uh, smokable flower. And uh, that's when I got a hold of uh, uh, John and we, uh, and here we are today. And I certainly have uh, uh, a few great things to let other farmers who are 
on the fence, so to speak, about this product, but it certainly, um, you know, has, has stood up. I think we've been using it for the past year and the greenhouse is 300 foot long. So we made a big panel and uh, it's, it's been doing the job. And what were you using prior that we were like, you know what, this just isn't working? Well, uh, it just your typical uh, tight mesh anti thrip and, and uh, white fly screen. Um, and with that up, my first trial, uh, it certainly didn't keep out the uh, botrytis, you know, uh, bud rot. And uh, uh, <clears throat> that's when I decided, uh, saw how fast and quickly that botrytis moves. Uh, I knew that because it, you can get that with uh, tomatoes. So in tomatoes, you can spray uh, effectively and more consistently, but uh, with the uh, the, the flower uh, hemp or cannabis, uh, once it you know um, initiates the flowering stage, you really are um, you can't you're very limited to spraying anything. On mm -hmm. it. You want to make sure that you know you can go the distance without having to uh, um, uh, uh, go to great lengths. Uh, with mechanical removal and all, all that sort of thing. But uh, the allergy guard is uh, stood as the first line of defense in, in the greenhouse growing. That's great. I mean, yeah, it's like you said, um, you know, you and amongst the other indoor growers, you know, are using this, you know, commercial, um, you know, insect shield. And I'm glad that you're able to find allergy guard online and it worked great for you. Um, for about a year. And can you tell us, you know, a little bit about the difference um, that you've seen for, you know, your first year harvest compared to prior years in terms of, um, let's say, uh, level of of pests and, and pollen, you know, was there limited pollen cross-contamination? Was um, levels a little bit higher? Can you, do you want to go into that? Oh, well, sure. I, I did. Uh, I continue doing, you know, air particle testing uh, with a little uh, handheld and it stayed at the, you know, three to five range, which is acceptable. And quite frankly, uh, if, if you use other techniques uh, uh, or mechanical environmental um, uh, um, uh, ways to, for instance, antimicrobial paints, uh, maybe UV lighting. Uh, it still starts with the uh, the evaporative cooling pad, the exterior screening, as like I mentioned before, the first line of defense. Mm -hmm. So uh, through, I've got several uh, crops registered with the uh, uh, FDAX in Florida and uh, compliance. And I, I saw absolutely no, um, no botrytis, no powdery mildew through each one of the crop cycles, which uh, I was very happy to see. As a matter of fact, you know, you, you get a spotted mite or something, it's usually carried in by a person. And mm -hmm. it doesn't come from the outside. So, you know, I, I found that um, very interesting because you're saving money without spraying, of course, and you're reducing labor. So the, the allergy guard, you know, uh, essentially will pay for itself over a period of time because it's effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And I think, I guess more importantly, it gives you like peace of mind, you know, as, as cultivators or just, you know, growers, you know, as you think about the possibilities of what can happen to your plants, but having the screen almost taking care of it you're like okay you know you're enjoying the plant you're, you're not running into issues and just pretty much watching it grow and you're curing it and taking care of it so that's that's wonderful no I never turn your back on mother nature yeah <laughs> yeah it's sort of funny like yeah, I think you're saying that but you're right you have to you know think ahead prepare you know and and uh you know, after 27 years of hydroponic growing, and 
you know, you, 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 it's a collective knowledge, you know, um, and, and uh, whatever you can do mechanically, uh, and like the allergy guard, uh, we're very impressed with uh, um, that, that portion of um, taking care of the plants. Mm -hmm. um, I, I found great. The airflow was good too. It uh, fit the same uh, structural space that needs needed to be as it fits the um, uh, the intake uh, and the evaporative cooling uh, uh, surface area. So there was no adjustment to that. I thought that was a, a very good um, uh, um, part part of the uh, the mesh. And the three layers, uh, including the, the sort of nanotechnology uh, octagon in the middle layer, and mm -hmm. its, its durability is, is is quite amazing too. Um, yeah, you were saying you you live in uh, West Palm and you've gone through these storm seasons and it's it's held right. Well, oh yeah, without a doubt, the the uh, the screen is held, the uh, the welds have held in. Uh, you know, I, was, anecdotally, I actually was uh, building up on a platform right above the allergy guard. And one evening, I took a step to the left and went right off. And the allergy guard caught me. Right, I I, I fell right into it like I was a, you know, um, a trapeze artist or something. But it it was really amazing. Okay. It, it didn't rip, tear. I was like, well, that's a. <laughs> That's the proof right there. Right, yeah, it's 235 pounds off of a platform. I was like, uh, I, I, was, I was thankful, really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. So um, can you walk us through the steps? So you found Allergy Guard online um, and then you, you know, you gave them a yeah. call. And what were the steps if someone wanted to reach out to Allergy Guard and working on the measurements? You know, Johnny can definitely jump in how your team worked with Walter in terms of fabricating the right size for his greenhouse? Well, Walter Walter was amazing. Walter is extremely technical and uh, it's got a lot of experience in the trade. And so working with Walter was, was a dream. Uh, he essentially uh, gave us the dimensions of the panel that he wanted in both height and length. And, uh, and we went to work, we got it to engineering uh, within a matter of uh, a few days. We had an engineering diagram uh, prepared. Uh, we sent it to Walter for cross-check and review of all the measurements, the you know type of um, of welds. Uh, if clients want to have any special hardware uh, mounted to the uh, perimeter of the screen, such as you know rust-resistant eyelets, where they can temporarily mount it while they're pinning it down on all four sides, you know, any kind of accessories. And, uh, and we went from there. It was, a, it was a simple process. In Walter's case, he had a very unique design because in many cases, the client will want just a flat sidewall. They'll, you know, they'll remove some of their ag plastic and they might go up 20 feet high and they might want to cover a 200 foot long run and it's just a sidewall. So they're replacing uh, ag plastic, which permits no airflow. Ag plastic will block the bugs, but there's no airflow. Oh, yeah. uh, you could replace ag plastic along perimeters, along the sidewalls with allergy guard, and then you're getting the airflow. You're blocking the pollen and the bugs, and uh, it works pretty well. So uh, the install was, this was a long one, and it's, you know, a very long panel. 300-foot run is a long panel. That was a continuous panel, but okay. um, Walter had suggested some very uh, innovative thinking. Like, you know, we decided to go modular after that, and so now we're limiting the length of the panels to a standard length, yeah. maybe 150 feet or 100 feet, yeah. and then if somebody wants to cover a 300-foot run, you know, we'll do multiple panels lined up. They're just easier to handle because mm -hmm. the rolls are less heavy. You know, we'll ship it on a roll. It'll be an accordion fold roll. So it's easy for the farms to roll out along their perimeter and then literally lift from the top end. It's accordion wrap. So you just lift it up like you're lifting a curtain 
You mm -hmm. lift it to the correct height and you mount it. What Walter did, which is very clever, in order to you know maximize his airflow, is his allergy guard panel actually uh, comes off of his side wall as a 90 degree bend. So in other words, if you look at the di well, you can't see the diagram exactly, but it comes off the side of his uh, evaporator pad wall parallel to the ground. And mm -hmm. then it turns 90 degrees down and runs down to the ground vertical. Mm -hmm. And when he says that he stepped off of his roof and the allergy guard caught him like mm -hmm. a trampoline, that was the, the overhead, you know, parallel length of allergy guard before it turned down to the ground. So it's like a, you know, like an, like an L shape coming off the building and then down to the ground. Oh, okay. So right. you're like, you're like covering the corners. To, yeah. It's like a lean tube, but you, you, you need that uh, volume of airspace for the evaporative cooling pad to operate correctly with the correct flow, with the correct uh, CFM created by the exhaust fans. Um, I would say to that, that point that it, it was a two inch, you know, uh, pipe that was used to have been the whole 300 feet that had up there for a decade or more. Um, it was a little curved. I would suggest using just straight angles if you were going to build a structure. But, um, it, you know, call up John, get my number, and uh, um, I'd be more than happy to you know, um, uh, share any knowledge because you never know. Uh, you don't learn from what goes right. And uh, believe me, <laughs> over all these years, uh, I figured out, you know, uh, what was wrong and takes a few wrongs to get it right. So um, it's fascinating too. Uh, Walter is a very, has a very innovative operation and he's, uh, he, he's way ahead. I mean, we generally work with chief agronomists and sort of the science side of um, the grow operations. And uh, Walter is, uh, is quite far ahead of the pack in terms of innovation. We we have clients. Walter is using Allergy Guard as first line of defense exterior sidewall, which is a more common application. We also have clients that are deploying Allergy Guard inside the greenhouse for uh, pollen isolation zone areas. Um, we they can drape it over entire grow tables. If they have close quarters grow operations okay. where they have different hybrids, for example, or different species uh, growing in close proximity, they can isolate those grow sections or those grow tables using allergy guard. Think of it like a, uh, if anybody ever did, you know, if you ever went uh, camping on a cot like a Boy Scout and you had a mosquito net with the mosquito net drapes directly over the entire mm -hmm. cot using a little framework. Uh, we could do the same thing over grow tables so we could fabricate huge you know uh kind of uh geometric rectangular shape like boxes with no bottom and it mm -hmm. literally raises and lowers over the entire you know area that you'd like to have protected so it's kind of a uh, it's interesting for exterior as well as interior use and the r d side is fascinating like i can't get into a lot of detail because it's it's proprietary and we do a lot of NDA work, but um, in any uh, large scale ag operation that's interested in pollen management, you know, we have multiple projects going on at any one time, which is more on the R&D side mm -hmm. where, um, you know, farmers are uh, exploring uh, pollen management in very specific ways. And so we could fabricate any shape and size um, uh, depending on what the uh, the ag operation wants to do with allergy guard, so it could be as small as uh, a bread box or as large as a, a small building. It just depends on what they're trying to cover up and protect against uh, airborne pollen and mold. Right, and you know, not only will this help with you know um, limiting cross pollination but what about the growers themselves have they know you know notice a difference in their health because i'm i'm very sensitive to pollen and if i love working with plants but you know i can't be around them that's going to be an issue for me so have you heard any feedback from the workers themselves 
Um, you know, it's funny that you ask that. Um, a, a lot of the workers, uh, you know, when we're traveling around the country visiting the groves and, you know, out California and just different parts of the country, a, a lot of the people that are working on the groves day to day, um, you know, English is a second language. And so, you know, we speak Spanish, so we're out there and we're always asking the questions because we do these tech support site visits and we right. always want to know everything. And if you right. want to know what's going on, you talk to the people on the ground right. and we ask that question and they've all commented uh, for sure, because what you've done, remember, it's a product that was developed to protect human beings yep. who suffered from acute allergies that just could not have pollen in the home or in the workspace or in an industrial environment. Mm -hmm. And so here, what we're doing is we're protecting a greenhouse is like a home and the plants are the people living in it. And so if you could make that space, if you can create this force field around the entire grow operation, that's going to block that pollen. Well, guess what? That's good for the people too, because, because it's blocking not only the pollen, but a lot of other bad stuff that's floating around in the air. And if Absolutely. it makes people sick, it's probably going to be, you know, inhibiting the growth of the uh, the grow. Mm -hmm. oh, that's wonderful. And, and Walter, have you had personal, you know, experience any difference? And when you were working with the plants yourself, I'm not sure if you have a, the immune system. Well, I mean, I, I, I under, yeah, I understand. Um, well, to me, it's different because, you know, being in a self-pollinating plant, asexual like tomatoes, yeah, you get sensitized. So mm -hmm. now I, I have a very difficult time going to, to work in in uh, uh, indoor tomatoes. To that point, even processing hemp flour, it's a different. You know, thinking about that just now, um, you know, I, I use a, a, a very high tech trimmer, um, but it kicks off what you would call pollen, but it's really keef. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, they, they didn't, you know, cover up eyes and whatnot uh, working in there. And that was extremely, um, you know, tough. So, I, I, you know, it's, you get sensitized and there's really not much you can do about it. Um, and, you know, being in the, uh, the greenhouse with the allergy guard growing hemp flower, um, you know, it is great. I mean, the hemp flower, you know, there's no pollen inside anyways, but I would suggest this, you know, if you're, and I'm a bit isolated where the property is, but the real, the real death knoll for uh, uh, cannabis or uh, hemp flower is, is the male pollen from the male plant. Yeah. Your neighbor just got an outdoor, you know, um hemp Let's say fiber you know, or grain and, it, yeah. and, and it's got a couple of males in there you're in deep deep trouble because that pollen will go inside the greenhouse and uh pollinate the uh females yeah and that's it so i mean that that is critical the bud rot and as you suggested earlier cross contamination by pollen uh okay. from uh male plants which is what um, uh, all cultivators just um, uh, have to concern themselves with. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I mean, depending on state regulations, like it's pretty much, you know, it's neighbor to neighbor case. You got to talk to your well, neighbor. You might be growing, let's say, you know, fiber or, or grain hemp, and you're trying to have this premium cannabinoid grow. It's like, hey, you know, who's really going to, at least you're protected and you have allergy guard. <laughs> so that's where we're like, okay, that's, I think that's where the peace of mind kind of comes in. Right. It's a fascinating game changer too, because if you think about it, and I think it was Walter that said this um, a while back, but, you know, the, the industry hasn't really changed fundamentally in a hundred years. And so the ability to take a passive product, like a greenhouse screen, hang it up um, and, you know, keep that pollen out and you know, a lot of other bad things, uh, that is an unknown concept. You know, you've never been able to block the pollen before unless you had a completely sealed operation with positive air pressure and the HEPA filters and all that. Yeah. That's a very expensive way to do it. Mm -hmm. And so 
it, this is a technology. We're an inch wide and a mile deep out there in the market. A lot of people have never even heard of such a thing. But as they find us and deploy the product, they reap the benefits of, you know, of, of, of purity and just overall quality management that up to now, it's, it's a very, very inexpensive way to get the job done. And uh, as Walter said, you know, you save money on the chemicals, you save money on a lot of things and it's passive. So it's, uh, you know, it's an insect management program. It's a passive tool that'll block all those guys plus the pollen. And that's the part that's never been done before. So it's a fascinating product and we want to try to revolutionize the trade with it. And uh, it's low cost. It makes it easy for the farmers to get the job done and it lasts a long time. And we block natural rainwater, by the way, for these sidewalls. So, you know, with insect screens, when it rains, you know, your concrete floor is getting wet and the, the area up against the screen is, you know, the floors are wet. Um, our product will uh, repel that rainwater and it just beads off the outside and runs down. It actually self cleans the exterior whenever it rains. So it rinses the pollen free. And uh, wow. it's kind of a neat, it's a neat side benefit. Wow, that's incredible. And John, where can um, indoor growers find the screen protector? This lists of the different uh, applications and they can click on allergy guard agriculture um, greenhouse pollen blocking screen and they could see a bunch of cool images and um, they can learn all about the construction of the product and the benefits and you know um, I think that uh, it's just a question of of getting the word out to help American farmers to continue to be the best in the world and to help them optimize every advantage they can in an environmentally friendly way that's passive that that gets the job done so Great. and you know they can get in touch with us through an inquiry and uh walter is always an amazing uh partner for us whenever we have tech questions or details about actual deployment and use you know we'll we'll, we'll call walter because walter uh has just been uh, a, ver a very satisfied customer. And we're happy to get his advice. Uh, very important to us to listen to the clients. And Walter, you know, do you talk to your, your farmer friends, um, you know, your colleagues about the Allergy Guard and how it's worked for you? Well, well they don't do like what I do. So yeah. <laughs> you know, the first guy to do it, I, you know, I will say, if anybody, you know, if anybody wants to see a, a a, a, a photograph of the the length of the greenhouse with the allergy guard on it. Um, uh, the the hemp permit website. There's some pictures on that too. So, okay. uh, uh, but I know I agree with John. It's just a multifaceted, uh, great agricultural product. Uh, you know, another thing with the lean tube for the uh, evaporative cooling pad, uh, and and rain you know it doesn't sprinkle here in florida it pours when it rains it pours uh there is no pooling on the top uh and the grade is slight and and to that point if you're pooling it would just drop down uh into the earth in, in front of the uh wet walls and it would take some time for that to actually dry out which also um you know it was another uh if you don't if you don't experience it, you wouldn't think about it. But that's also very helpful um, uh, part part of the product. And what is your website, Walter? Oh, it's, it's just hemppermit.com. Okay, and we can see the allergy the allergy guard on your greenhouse. Oh, it's just picture you know of the length of the greenhouse and how the lean to is. It's from it's from the evaporative cooling side. Okay. Well very nice. You know, structure. Also Anna, we've got um we've got a lot of photos in our tech file as well which we could supply and uh, I think the the neat thing, you know, for for people who are using uh medical grade uh hemp and um you know if if the uh, if the viewer is interested in experiencing uh, the benefits of a product that's grown in such an environment that's been uh, free of pollen contamination, 
you know, the hemp hermit is a excellent place to, to try that because, you know, they're, they're different. They've differentiated the quality of their product uh, by managing the environment. And so that's a really neat differentiator that most of the, uh, most of the products out there are not doing that, but uh, the oh, hemp yes, hermit product is. That's correct. Yeah. You want to, you want to, a medical grade, as they say, whether it's in the growing, the cultivating process, or it's in the cure, controlled cure and dry process. To that point, any microbial reduction, you know, we've got units for that just to ensure, um, you know, a, a healthy product, especially if you're, you know, uh, smoking it. Uh, and there's, there's a, a lot of you know, uh, like uh, bacteria, funguses, you just want to make sure that uh, you don't have any problem because I have uh, extensive certificates of analysis uh, for all aspects of uh, heavy metals, but also any sort of microbial that are extensively uh, done to, to pass the tests in order to have medical grade uh, hemp flour. Well, that's incredible. I mean, yeah, I'm sure, you know, consumers, they want to, you know, combust a clean flower that's going to their body to help them, especially those, you know, they might have an autoimmune, you know, disease. They, they shouldn't um, ingest or consume anything that might have mycotoxins, pollen or, or, or fungal. So that's incredible. The allergy guard can, can create medical grade um, hemp flower. Or cannabis flower. Neither or. <laughs> well, thank you so much, John and Walter. And thank you everyone for watching our In Conversation with uh, series. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>